Good afternoon, everyone. So today I am here with my class number twenty-two, and uh, today we shall start discussing the conversations that are going to happen between the characters that I had mentioned in my last class. So in the last class we had discussed about the Seraphin brothers, who are the authors of this one-act play or a very short play. supposed to be a comedy or whatever let us see it as we progress uh, doing or discussing the play and uh, seraphin brothers you just need to remember about what exactly are they these two brothers who are called as the golden boys of the madrid theater so they have really worked very hard for the spain theater spanish theater at the same time you have been given here or there is one short play written by these two brothers which is prescribed which has been titled as a sunny morning so in the last class we have discussed certain connotations related to what this play will be about or what exactly uh, that would we would be uh, you know reading or discussing at the same time we also did some two important uh, pre reading questions before we could start discussing the play that is how do you feel after meeting one of your friends after a long time or what exactly do you expect or so when you are meeting a friend after a gap of very long time or maybe years together or something how do you feel and the other question that was asked to you was about what that is you were also asked about how do you actually feel about uh, uh relationships yeah when we actually talk about relationships certain relationships do come to an end and why do you really think so that certain relationships will have to come to an end or something okay so after discussing these two questions which were related to the title of this uh, play that is a sunny morning then we actually discuss something about the picture that has been given immediately after the title after the pre reading questions in your textbooks and then we discussed here about the four main characters that the play has isn't it so there is a lady a old woman by name donna laura she is assisted by her maid servant by name petra on the other hand you have a man he is also old, very old and uh, probably he uh, maybe he is old of course yes and uh, we would see about what this don gonzalo by name don Ga gonzalo is the another character of the play who is also assisted by his servant by name junaito isn't it so these are the four names that you need to remember and uh, the scene that was set before we could open the play was very clear that is it was about the description of how dona laura was looking okay so this word dona don are nothing but they are the words used in the language spanish language referring to sir and madam okay so dona is nothing but a respectable word that we use for the old ladies or the mm, old uh, old ladies so to say like you know in order to respect them or something so uh, the word dona don are nothing but sir and madam you will have to understand in that way and uh, dona and don so these are the two words used as the prefixes for the characters that appear in the play okay so at the time of the description or before opening up of a first scene of the play or something the setting of the scene was told in such a way that this lady that is dona laura was about 70 plus years of her age and she used to come to one of the parks that is she used to come to a park on a corner of that particular park there was a bench and she was supposed to go and sit there and she was assisted by her maid petra at at that uh, in order to tell you about the appearance of this lady she was very old enough but she was very fair enough at the same time she was just trying to hide her real identity in the form of whatever the things that she can be used in order what uh, she can use in order to uh, hide her true identity or something but she is really very old but uh, on one arm like you know her arm was 
captivating the Petra's help in order to go and sit on a bench. On the other hand, she was also carrying a carousel, nothing but a colorful umbrella, which she was also using it as a walking stick or something. So, when the play opens, we see the entry of home. Yes, Donna, Laura, and she has been assisted by her maid, Petra. Am I clear? So, these are the things that we have discussed in the last class. And now, let us start discussing the conversations that are going to happen between the characters. Clear? So, keep these things in your mind and then let us start straight away what exactly the play is all about. So, the very first line is spoken by the one of the main characters, Donna, Laura. <clears throat> I am so glad to be here. I feared my seat would be occupied. What a beautiful morning. So these are the first lines spoken by Donna Laura. So I am so glad to be here. So what is the place? Park. Isn't it? So she is entering the park and she is very happy for the fact and moreover she, is, she was actually afraid that my seat would, have, would be occupied. I was very nervous or I was having anticipation in my mind that if anyone else has already occupied by my place or the place where I usually come to sit. What a beautiful morning. So, the very first line is something that is a reference to the title of this short play that we are going to do. Okay. So, she is very glad and she is very glad for the fact that she is in the park. <coughs> Excuse me. Moreover, she is very happy for another fact that her place was not occupied by anyone else. And she talks to us about the weather and she tells that it was really a very beautiful morning sunny morning or something all right then but petra look at petra what does she replies petra replies saying that yeah the sun is a beautiful morning but of course yes the sun is very hot so laura replies by saying yes you're only 20 so look at the age gap between these two characters she is a 70 year old woman on the other hand she has a petra who's a maid who's just 20. she sits down on uh, the bench oh i feel more tired today than usual noticing petra who seems impatient go if you wish to chat with your guard okay so what was petra's job petra's job was always to take this lady donna laura make her sit on a bench where she usually sits and then she has her own works to do or something which was noticed by donna laura and she says yes you're only 20 that is you are very young in your age yes so she sits down on the place where she had come for then i feel more tired than usual today noticing petra who was impatient impatient she was you know uh, thinking of going somewhere or she was very eagerly waiting to do something or something noticing this petra uh, noticing the impatience of petra what does uh, donna laura say go if you wish to chat with your guard so since i have i have sit on the where on a bench isn't it so i i am at my place comfortably sitting so now you can proceed you can go and you can talk to the guard if you wish to do so then petra says he is not mine senora he belongs to the park so if you want to go and talk to the guard of the park or something you can go ahead but for that she replies no he is not mine senora senora is also a word that is used for miss okay a lady who is married or unmarried the french word for, i'm sorry the spanish word for that was senora senora heard of i think you might have heard of the word like senorita isn't it in the similar way senora he belongs to the park so she petra says that no he is not mine the guard of the park is not mine he doesn't belong to me but rather he belongs to the park that we every day come in then Laura says, he belongs more to you than he does to the park. Go find him, but remain within calling distance. 
I know what you're supposed to do. I know very well that he is more belonging to you rather than to the park. So what you can notice here is that for whatever Petra says, there is a opposite reaction from Laura. So that is what you need to understand. That is what you need to find out here. Okay. He belongs to you more than he belongs to the park. So go find out wherever he is, but remain in such a distance that if I need any help or something, I will call you and you should come and help me out or something. That is you be at a space wherein I can call you if it is required. So that's what she says. Then I see him over there waiting for me. Okay, then she sees the guard of the park or something and uh, she says that, yeah, I saw him. Do not remain more than 10 minutes. She is ordering, isn't it? So Donna, uh, Laura is ordering her maid. Don't be talking to him for more than 10 minutes or something. You can go talk to him and come back to me is what she says. Petra, very well, Senora, walks toward the right side of the stage. Wait a moment, Laura says. What does Senora wish? Give me the breadcrumbs. Okay. So before she goes, Laura wanted something and she asks for it. And she says that, give me breadcrumbs. You know what are breadcrumbs? So something that we use like, you know, uh, grains or something that we actually made up of the bread or something. So she wanted the breadcrumbs. So give me my breadcrumbs. Petra, I don't know what is the matter with me. She, she says that I don't know what's the matter with me. Then Laura smiling, I do. Your head is where your heart is with the guard. So when I ask you for something, you are afraid of the fact that whether you have forgotten it at home, whether you have not brought it or something. But I know the fact that you are more interested in going and talking to the guard rather than helping out. That is what she says. Then somehow she searches everything, whatever the bag or whatever they have brought. And finally, Petra finds the breadcrumbs. That is here, Sonora. She hands Donna Laura a small bag, exit Petra by right. Okay. So before she goes to talk to the guard or something, she hands over a bag which was containing the breadcrumbs that Laura had asked for and she exits the scene. Okay. Now where Petra has gone? Petra has gone to talk to the guard of the park. And she exits the scene here. And now who is remaining in the scene or who could be seen on the stage? It is only Donna Laura who is sitting on a bench and she is carrying a bag. Then Donna says, adios, glances towards trees at right. Here they come. They know just when to expect me. She rises, walks toward right and throws three handful of bread crumbs these are for the spirists okay now what do you think that she is doing here so she had a bag from petra right so she takes out three handful bread crumbs looks at a tree and sees and says that yeah they exactly wait for my time to arrive to the park and here they are and she spills these bread crumbs on the floor Remember what did, we, uh, what did we notice in the uh, picture that was given? There were birds, isn't it? There were birds who were being fed on what Donna Laura had brought, isn't it? So that is what is happening here. These are for the spirus, spirus, the people who are very hungry. These for the gluttons and these for the little ones which are the most persistent. So she is able to identify the pigeons or the birds that some of them are old in the form of like you know they are adults or something. At the same time there are also baby birds for which she says that these are for the gluttons, gluttons who are very old or something and these are for the little ones which are the most persistent, persistent so they are very active. They are very persistent. Laughs. She returns to her seat and watches with a pleased expression the pigeons feeding. So here you come to know that she comes to the park every day to feed the pigeons. Okay. So she starts feeding the pigeons like you know she throws the handful uh, breadcrumbs on the ground so that these pigeons can come and eat that. There the big one is always first. 
I know him by his big head. Now one, now another, now two, now three. That little fellow is the least timid. Timid, very small, very weak or something like that. I believe he would eat from my hand. That one takes his piece and flies up to the branch alone. He is a philosopher. But where do they all come from? It seems as if the news had spread. Ha ha, don't quarrel. There is enough for all. I'll bring more tomorrow. So this is a scene which depicts that Donna Laura is a, a very old age, old age lady but she has a habit of coming to the park every day by carrying the breadcrumbs and she always has a habit of feeding the pigeons. While she feeds, she is also noticing that which one is gluttonous or which one is very timid or which one is very weak or small or whatsoever. Which means to tell us that Donna Laura was a frequent or she usually every time she comes to the park in order to feed the pigeons and she knows it very well who is elder who is younger but she is of the opinion that don't quarrel for the breadcrumbs okay today i have brought this much tomorrow also i will bring which hints us that donna laura was a frequent visitor to the park in terms of carrying the breadcrumbs and just feeding the pigeons getting so what we have seen at the end of this particular thing here is that she is of the opinion that she knows very well which pigeon, how much does it eat and all those stuff and she is becoming a frequent visitor who kept on feeding the pigeons. So don't quarrel, I will bring some more tomorrow. There she ends her speech. Then meanwhile what happens is that enter Don Gonzalo. So you know who is Don Gonzalo and Ginaito from left. So they enter the scene and they come, come from the left hand side. Don Gonzalo is an old gentleman of 70. So what do you come to know here is that even he is also a very old man of about 70, gouty, but he's a bit strong, gouty, you know, he's mighty, but he's very impatient. He doesn't have patience. Okay, he leans upon Junaito's arm and drags his feet somewhat as he walks. So this is a kind of a same scene that has been repeated as we have seen with Laura and Petra. So both of these men, that is Donna Laura and Don Gonzalo are both are of the same age, that is of 70 years, but both of them do need assistance from their respective maid servants. That is what you need to understand, okay? But one quality about Don Gonzalo is that he is very impatient, a person one who doesn't wait for anything. So he's very impatient, but he's a bit gouty man. At the same time, he's also very old, unlike Donna Lara. So they enter the scene here. And now let us see what these two people talk to each other. So Gonzalo saying, Idling their time away, idling, spending, okay? Idling their time away, they should be saying mass, okay? So he points out to someone there and says that these people are just wasting their time. Instead, they should have been saying the mass. Mass, nothing but, what is it? Prayer, yeah. Mass is nothing but prayer, okay? Then, Genito says, you can sit here, senor. Senora, senor. So these are the two different ways of calling the different, uh, you know, male or female. Senora is for female. Senor, S-E-N-O-R is for the male person. Okay. You can sit here, Senor. There is only a lady. Dona Laura turns her head and listens. So at the time when these two people come, there was a, only a space that was left was the same bench where Laura was sitting. So Junaito, his servant, says that there is only space left here. So you can sit here, Senor. There is only a lady. Donna Laura turns her head and she listens to what this man is telling to her master. Gonzalo says, I want Junaito. I want a bench to myself. No, I will not sit with a, uh, on a bench where there is already someone is occupied. So what he says is that I don't want to sit there. So what I do is that I'll try to find out a bench for myself. But there is none. That one over there is mine. So they just try to find out if there is any other vacant bench that is left in the park. 
So Gonzalo finds one and he says that there are three priests sitting there. So there was only another bench that was there but it was also occupied where there were three priests who were already sitting them. Rout them out. Rout? Ask them to go away. Rout them out. Have they gone? No indeed, they are talking. Just as if they were glued to the seat. Glued? Nothing. But they are not getting up and they are not going or leaving the bench or something. They are still sitting there and they are talking to each other. No hope of their leaving. Come this way, Jinaito. They walk towards the birds who are on the right side. So, as, they, as Gonzalo did not find a bench for himself, because he wanted a bench for himself, he said that he would not share a bench with where Dona Laura is already sitting, right? So he was just trying to find out some more space available, but there was only one bench that was left, but even that bench was occupied by the three priests. So they just have a discussion like, you know, ask them to go out, but no, they were still sitting there, they were talking, they were discussing something and uh, there was only one space that was left, which was seen earlier by Junaito. Okay, so towards bird right, indignantly look out. So he starts walking towards the right side of the park where Donna was sitting and Donna was just not sitting, but she was, what was she doing? She was feeding the birds or she was feeding the pigeons. So when uh, uh, Don Gonzalo starts walking towards the right side of the park along with his servant, Laura says, look out, hey, look out. That is, she stops him saying that, look out. Then Gonzalo starts talking to Laura. The first question that he asks her was, are you speaking to me, Senora? Miss. Yes, to you. What do you wish? You have scared away the birds who were feeding on my crumbs. The very first complaint that Laura says to Gonzalo is that you have scared away. Scared away? When he started walking towards the right side of the bench, okay, the obviously the pigeons who were being fed on the crumbs that were thrown by or that were given by Donna Laura all these pigeons started flying back. That is why she says that you have scared away. That is you have scared away the birds who were feeding on my crumbs. Then he says, what do I care about the bird? Why should I care about the birds that you were feeding? You might not care, but I do care. That's what Laura says. This is a public park. So he just tries to make her understand that it is a public park. Whoever can come and go or sit wherever he likes. That is what he is trying to tell her. So if you are of the opinion that I have scared away your birds, then why do I care about it? Then Laura says, then why do you complain that the priests have taken your bench? Then why are you complaining that these priests are not getting up from their place where they are sitting when you say that it is a public park? Look at Donna Laura. She is also well aware of what kind of the words that are spoken by the Gonzalo. Then Gonzalo says, Senora, we have not met. This is the first time that we are meeting. I cannot imagine why you take the liberty of addressing me. Come, Junaito, both go out right. So he says that we have not met. This is the first time that we are meeting, but I don't know why are you addressing me like that. I cannot imagine why you take the liberty of addressing me like that. So he asks his servant, Junaito, come, let us go to and find some other place in the park. Then Laura says, what an ill-natured old man. So these are the expressions by Laura on Gonzalo. That is, she says, what an ill-natured old man. Why must people get so fussy, fussy, irritated and cross when they reach a certain age? What, are, what is the uh, age of both these people, Laura and uh, Gonzalo? Both are of the same age, isn't it? 70s. They are all, uh, they are in their 70s. But look at the way that she is making, uh, what can I say? Uh, she is making uh, some kinds of the responses on what kind of a man is he. What an ill-natured old man is he? Why must people get so fussy, irritated and cross when they reach a certain age? 
looking towards right i'm glad he lost that bench too serves him right for scaring the birds he is furious yes yes find a seat if you can poor man he is wiping the per perspiration from his face here he comes a carriage could not raise more dust than his feet enter don gonzalo and genito by right and walk toward left so once when these two people have gone towards the right side in order to find some more bunches if they are available in the park this lady starts talking to herself by complaining that what kind of a man is he so she is complaining about his age and she is complaining about his impatience the way he was talking to okay then she uh, sits there in, in the place where she was sitting and he lost that bench also she is noticing what don gonzalo is doing so he lost that bench too so there was one more bench that was there probably but again that too was occupied by someone serves him right for scaring the birds god has given him the punishment for scaring away my birds he is very furious why because he did not get a place to sit yes yes find a seat if you can she is just talking to herself by looking at what this man is doing poor man he is wiping the perspiration that is he was sweating and he was just trying to wipe out the sweat from her face here he comes a carriage would not raise more dust than his feet now she starts making fun of him now she starts making complaints about him the first complaint that she says is that a carriage would not raise more dust than his feet she notices don gonzalo's dress she notices the shoes that were worn by this man and she is of the opinion that he is carrying a lot of dust on his shoe carriage of dust so what we need to understand here is that laura is slowly pointing out or she is slowly uh, what can i say uh, making this man so furious by telling all these words in the form of complaints the first thing that she says is that this man the shoes that he is wearing is carrying a lot of dust unlike his character is that is what she tries to say here meanwhile as she was talking to herself what she notices here is that don gonzalo again is coming back to the same bench getting he is coming back from life to the right side of the park and he is almost coming back to the same place where there is only one space that is left can you guess where where will he come and sit yeah let us see so a carriage would not raise more dust than his feet okay so he was he was very dirty that's what she may tries to me, uh, say enter don gonzalo and junaito by the right and walk towards the left then have the priests gone yet junaito no indeed senor they are still there so he's just very angry now because he's not getting space to sit he's not getting an empty bench to sit wherein he has already ignored that he would not share the place or a space where laura is already sitting so that is why he's just trying to find a bench for himself but all in vain because he could not find any empty space left in the park so both of them will come back so he's asking his servant whether those three priests have gone but he says no they are still there then look at what gonzalo says when these people are still sitting and he is very furious because he is not getting a space to sit in the bench or in the park okay then the authorities should place more benches here for these sunny mornings see again he talks to us about the title of the play isn't it so what Uh, gonzalo says here is that i must talk to the authorities that is people who take care of this park that is to the government or whoever it is okay so authorities should place more benches here for these sunny mornings well i suppose i must resign myself and sit on the bench with the old lady finally he concludes by saying that though i was not willing to share the space on a bench where laura is already sitting but i have no choice now so he says that i do not find more empty space here so i need to resign myself that is i need to confess or i need to go back to the same place where this old lady is sitting then muttering to himself he sits at the extreme end of dona laura's bench and looks at her indignantly hesitantly he just looks at her touches his hat as he greets her okay so he takes off the hat okay and then starts greeting dona laura by saying good morning
so this is what he says okay so i'll stop here we will continue in the next class of mine about what could happen further okay it's a very interesting play okay so let us discuss and enjoy it as much as we can uh, because this is something about two old people sitting in a park discussing about or let us see what exactly are they going to discuss so far whatever is being discussed just remember it okay those four characters and she comes to the park every day to feed the pigeons she always carries the bread crumbs okay so old lady on the other hand you have two men one is the old man the other one is a servant okay they also come to the park okay but due to the non availability of the space or something what we see so far here is that finally without any options left or without any space left in the park what finally we see here is that <clears throat> don gonzalo finally unwillingly accepts to sit on a same bench where laura is already sitting okay so i'll stop here we'll continue in the next class thank you very much